Happy New Year. Welcome to Demopta. I'm Debbie Gordon Rubin. Tonight we'd like to show you programs we aired during our 1992 season. First, we'd like to show you a clip of a production following the herd. Remembering the reindeer herding days, we talked with Tuktoyaktuk elders at Reindeer Station. was the idea when the herding was first, when the reindeer were first brought over, um, do you, was it to create employment or to bring food into Her this area or what was Originally the Originally in the late 1920s it was because the caribou migration stopped coming into the Western Arctic. Mm -hmm. yeah. This was the reason they brought the herd from Alaska. Okay. Mm. Because for some inexplicable reason the caribou stopped migrating into this area. There was real need for me. There's absolutely no caribou at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they bring the herd in. No? Mm -hmm. You can say now, 60 years later, the caribou have come back to it. Yeah. They change their migratory routes mm -hmm. for some reason. Oh, they yes, they do a lot of yeah. and, and the other reason for it was because reindeer are semi-domesticated. You can't control their movements. No. You can't control the movements of reindeer being semi-domesticated. You can't control the movements of the caribou. No, sure. So that idea is still valid. So in what way did the, the whole operation fall through, in a sense, in that there wasn't enough people buying the meat once it was well, they here? They developed an outside market for it, you could say. Okay. They weren't in, uh, sending any out of the territories. But basically, the idea was sound. It's still a sound idea with modern marketing methods. Mm. You are expected to come, you got the reindeer there, huh? Oh, there's no problem, I think I choose a reindeer. Yeah. In the herding, yeah. Mm -hmm. got the, you in come, come from there, you got it there, huh? Mm -hmm. And also, myself, you know, I make a mistake, I give up, huh? Diamond. Diamond, Ah, Diamond, Oh, Diamond, Oh, Diamond, Oh, Diamond, 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 you see, you, know, you asked a question, I'll answer, because this is what they're talking about right now. Uh, it couldn't compete with trapping, because trapping prices were good. So these herders were brought from Cambridge Bay District. A lot of them were brought from the east. Mm -hmm. They, they, they <coughs> weren't hunters and trappers from this area. Unami. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Kiko <laughs> 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 
یافتم تو بلو in February of 92, two Greenland dogs, letters from Kanak, Greenland, traveled through the Northwest Passage on their way to Alaska and back home to Greenland. They were studying the life and language dialects of the Inuit and where it is at today. We talked with them about their journey. When you were um <coughs> Tower <laughs> Da paru spauna, huni kahta mana tuyatum. Wanga nik nasuruminga nik wanga ima three thousand five hundred kilometers misani pokta na inga slow po two two and half months. Two and half months. Da wakamu chigut usisak put ma thousand pound asaga te slofi minga ni. Mangani asante. Wangani am a thousand pound. Kimi na wese sa kimi kuti suwani kimi rasulumi spins pay, ten pit pay paruto. Chiu sa chiu kimi na wese sa. Ta ba do usi diu chiu ya chiu a thousand thousand pound misa no kimi chiu. Ta nung kia to to fuel. Ta ko wese tu pa si ngi chuk pa suis la si. Ta ro man nung a piu two and half months rasulumi ngan ni al the singer Nick Akawa wouldn't stay. Caught to him in a suit in my ten days. The other caught to him in a nipon paro mut in my twelve eleven days. The I might sing in my Selma Punerua. My government to pay our trip to visit Inuit in Canada and Alaska. We want to make a bridge between Inuit. Uh, uh, in with the Greenland and Canada, Alaska, and our in our trip, and uh, and uh, we are just re researching in with and uh, in the hall and eating and uh, from dancing and to mentioning. and we have show from Greenland, and now uh, we have show our close to the people, and we talk to Inuchirut to the people here on the road, and now uh, we can understand them and. Uh, we can talk to them and uh, we eat together and we get a lot of peace and uh, meat to our dog on the road. It's very, very nice uh, uh, trip and uh, very nice people and we meet uh, Inuit people. <laughs> Providing teachers and schools with names of resource people they can bring in from their community, different types of materials and ideas which are available to teach students about their surroundings was a highlight at the Sir Alexander Mackenzie School professional development session last year. When we worked on the unit, the, last, the ladies asked me a question that kind of stumped me for a few days. I went away feeling very inadequate. <laughs> um, 
They wanted to know when I spoke about certain things how, as a classroom teacher, I was able to utilize community resource people and um, still have a focus on as an objective and meet some of the concepts that we had to cover in our curriculum areas. And I went away and I thought I never had to really think about this or itemize it for anyone before. So I had to do a lot of self-reflecting because you know as teachers you learn best by trial and error and that's basically how it was with myself. I'm no different than you are. Um, and one of the things that was kind of beneficial was that I was not from this community when I first came on stream. I was from a clavic, so I was a little bit leery about asking um, certain people to come in and so I had to use some of the strategies that are outlined uh, in your um, in your book uh, in the preamble um, the Roman Numa 5 if you would turn to that um, and I've often heard um, teachers say that it's so hard to get members in from the community and have a successful presentation um, because some of them assume that you can just a lot of people assume you can just pick up the phone and ask somebody to come in and tell them what topic you want covered and that's basically what's going to happen. For some people that will occur, but for most, um, a lot of our people are shy. Some of them don't really know what you mean by um, talking about acid rain or whatever um, and those types of things. So there, when I thought about it, there, there are some steps that are really crucial for getting a successful visit. Our history is documented mainly through the oral tradition. And because of this, um, we need to utilize the people that this tradition has been passed on to because, as the lady said, when we went out to get resources, there was very little there. What was there, we had to be really critical of. Um, one of the things that I'd like you to add to that page, how to access community <coughs> resource people, is that elders love to work with other elders and to have assistance from other people because even the other day when I asked Sarah if she would come, she said, um, am I going to be there? And I said, yes. And then she said, um, I'm going to be with her. I said, yes. And she said, yahoo! <laughs> so I thought, okay. And then Elizabeth uh, Greenland said, told me to ask Catherine to come. And I said, I was going to. And she said, oh, you good girl. So I thought, okay. That's, uh, that's something I better add. For the pre-planning pre for the class visits, it's really crucial. Um, some of the things that I had to go through with my kids were questioning techniques. Um, having them role play, like an elder being there. We wanted to involve the elders into our, our um, unit, which we felt was the foundation. Mm -hmm. So we had a um, session with the elders where all the, all the teachers were divided into groups, and they all went and met with the different elders and had a group session um, dealing with various topics. The buddies are Liz and Mary Ellen. Because we decided that the foundation of our unit was going to be local resource people, then it became easy because um, after we did sort of a local search for resources like books and, and um, things like that, we found that there weren't any, or there weren't too many. And as Pauline mentioned earlier, um, what there was maybe often wasn't accurate or it was outdated or it was from a more southern or an unrelated perspective. So um, what we did was we went right back to the people and we organized and learned um, with a lot of help from people around town how, how to access our local resources, and that's what we did. Our group met with Victor and Emma and Sarah, and they were showing us how to do string games. So in order to present our little um, unit on string games and what we learned from the activity, this is the introduction, okay? What can you do with a ball of string? You can do almost anything. Put it on your hands and make a shape. Tie it all together, no need for tape. Measure it, play with it, draw and talk about the things you can make without a walk to the entertainment center to turn you on. Just pick up the string, no need to yawn. <laughs> the Summer Language Camp is another ongoing program. This benefits children who don't usually get a chance to experience life on the land. The Inivialuit Social Development Program applies and distributes the funds, and the communities decide who and where these camps are to be located. It's not a, a program that, that ISDP just wanted to 
to sponsor every year. It's what the communities are asking for. Every year, um, the communities ask ask ISDP to to apply for the funding because they see the usefulness of the camps and promoting our language. And the the, the maintenance of our of our language is is quite an issue today because um, in 1989, the Teaching and Learning Center did a, a survey of fluent speakers of the Inuvialuktun language, and they found that there was only 10 to 14 percent of the Inuvialuit alone that can speak in the Inuvialuktun language. So it is quite a concern to ISDP and the IRC. There's two important um, objectives of the camp is the first is to teach the language, to, to enhance and promote the use of the language among children and to give an opportunity for children to be out, to experience our way of life. <laughs> That, um, that sees the value of the camps, like in, in maintaining our language and, and just promoting our way of life, our traditional way of life. Western Arctic region, springtime is jamboree time. Here are some highlights from the 1992 Muskrat Jamboree held here in Inuvik. Uba alani hakat nauli kawara hote, wadi fit miglone bunga hektila ani kanga tamna nauli kahra hote ngat. Wane hivule na kah hain grajers nauli piahalugu tabunga. Unahin Patkatsuk to Gulabligo, Unap Talk tied a silent ping a yard, a clawing man. Wani angutini ulo kala mata hivuli na kwa kodi kasiuk wana hii tukulaga vilugu Hank Rogers pinga yata hii William Day angutini niti leo kala mata upakta vilugu hii upakta kwa na kwa ni kabla hii inda kwa kahati.
for 1992, which we'll leave you with tonight, was the five-day excitement, entertainment, and most important, the meetings of the 6th General Assembly of the Inuit Circumpolar Conference here in Inuvik. ICS, along with many other media crews, covered the day-to-day -day events. This began with the arrival of the country's delegations, Monday's opening, the events during the week, and the closing on Friday, July 24th. You'll see and hear the similarities of four countries Inuit, which match the theme of the conference, one Arctic, one future. Nine hundred years, Makot, Katila, Hakot, Kairot, Greenland, Alaska, Canada, Milio, Makolo, Akreli, Garot, Hyakta, Horot, Haila, Hakata, coming, Kairi, Minyagalan. We got a great new England money, Pagalaho Gate. We got talk in New England, Munahari coming, Okupa, Kamahopia Lakut, Katak Pala Mata. Manna began near the ICC could Chilak Ramin had to get to it in it. Cut it to fear. Began near Lomimat, the man in I now declare the Inuit Circumpolar Conference, Sixth General Assembly, officially opened. That the national organization is responsible for negotiating the broad constitutional amendments because of the diversity of our region. We have different needs for Aboriginal people across this country. We have different languages, cultures, geographic needs, and therefore uh, self-government will not look the same in each region. So constitutional amendments 
are one half of the story and self-government agreements are the other half. I believe that it's the responsibility of the national organization to negotiate the self-government amendments and then it's up to the regions, uh, perhaps with the help of the national organization, uh, if they so require, to negotiate self-government arrangements so that their needs are met in the region. Many speakers on the previous days spoke about the need to ensure that the land will continue to be able to provide for our people. Threats to our environment, both external and in internal, continue to grow. They range from transboundary pollution to increased pressures on our wildlife and plant resources. Solutions cannot come from outside of our region. They cannot be conceived by others. They must be written and enforced by ourselves. The thinning of the ozone layer is not our fault. It is being caused by industrial and other pollution in parts of the world which are far removed from our homeland. The cause is, some, is from somewhere else. But the problem is right here. Most of the ozone depletion is happening over the poles. Over the homelands of our people. My youngest son is seven years old. In the spring and summer, he likes to spend all day out of the sun. He brings me a lot of pain. When I have to worry about his health, just because he's being a child. It is my feeling that the leaders of the conference must make the issue of the ozone depletion become priority. The issues are very specific. One will be on whaling. Canada has a concern on whaling, and they've been working on that. The other one will be on the environment. The other one will be on human rights. And uh, the other one will be on economics. Primarily, those are the topics, health and social issues. Five topics, really, that we are going to be addressing. Uh, Iglaw ni Akti Lapti ni kita sama ini si mana tu? Nunap tigun nero tip tigun atau nero nak tip tigun suli asis suli inyu ne aning inyu inyu it asis suli timimun ilu aku tit cemat kuat arwek siok tuat Canada sama isumalu tekak tu arwek siok ne aning kun asit afirmu nusabaran ni aku tu.